I welcome you to this edition. Oluwa Shion Oyele is still my name, Edu Media Africa. Our subject is literature in English. And uh, in this edition, we are considering poetry, African poetry. And the title of our poem is A Government Driver on His Retirement by Chibuike Onu. In our previous uh, discussion, I already gave you the analysis of this poem. But in this edition, we're going to consider the literary devices used in the poem. That's talking of some figures of speech used in the poem. And uh, before we do that, these are the lesson objectives. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to explain the poet's use of inversion. I mean, you should know the meaning of inversion first. Explain the poet's use of alliteration. You should also know the meaning of alliteration. Explain the poet's use of euphemism. And lastly, you will be able to explain the poet's use of irony. We are going to consider all of these in the course of the lecture. Our reference material remains literature, example focused literature in English. And uh, the image you are seeing, we have 35 years after. You remember in the analysis of the poem, you were told that um, in the public service, usually public servants, of that civil servants spend the period of 35 years after which they go on retirement. And uh, we fully explored this in the discussion of, uh, in the analysis of the poem, um, a government driver on his retirement. And uh, this is the entire poem. I'll quickly run through it before we go into the literary devices used in the poem. In stanza one of the poem, many years on wheels, in faithful service to his fatherland, Today retires he home, and a celebration he holds. Many years as he pummeled his boozy throat, in obedience to duty rules and regulations, today he will go home a free man, eligible for his country's services. Come, friends, rejoice with me. I shall booze and zoom myself home, away from duty rules. Come celebrate my freedom, early to duty tomorrow holds not. 35 years of faithful services are booze to sleep away my sufferings today I've long waited for. More joy to send him home, a brand new car in his name, an appreciative symbol for undented 35 years of service to fatherland. Come friends and rejoice more, joy to no more joy to joy. Today frees and makes me a king, my patience rewarded. And so he boozed and boozed, celebrating the celebration of his retirement. From faithful service to fatherland, he battled with his bottle booze. And the last stanza, on his way home on wheels, booze boozed his vision and clear judgment. He boomed his brand new car and it sent him home, home to rest in peace. Quickly to the background of the poem, which uh, you were given in uh, one of the previous uh, videos earlier released. We were told in that um, video that Africans were previously known for farming and other agricultural activities. But the invasion of the whites into Africa caused a shift from occupational work to paid employment, especially in the civil service. Africans were known for uh, farming and other agricultural activities initially until they were hired to work as drivers, as clerks to the white men. And of course, they jumped at such opportunity. But many years after independence, the situation has remained the same, at least in the African environment. Civil servants still don't get uh, treated any better. And uh, the excitement with which many people accepted civil service job is greeted with series of disappointments. Now to uh, today's lesson, that's literary devices used in the poem. A government driver on his retirement explores the theme of destructive nature of unrestrained joy, of unbridled joy. And, um, you know, to explore this theme, the poet uses certain literary devices to buttress the point. Now, the first one is the poet's use of inversion. Inversion is a figure of speech intended to give emphasis to an idea by a change from the natural order of the words in the sentence. In other words, there is a different arrangement of expression. 
and of course that um, makes it to appear bizarre. If you look at the examples cited in lines 3, 4 and 13 of the poem, we have today retires the home. That's a perfect example of inversion in the poem. That expression can be rewritten as he retires home today. But the poet deliberately uses inversion just to give emphasis to a certain idea there, and that's the idea of retirement. The poet speaker has worked for a period of 35 years, and it is now time for him to retire home. So today retires he home is an example of inversion used by the poet in the poem. And um, we have an, a second example, and the celebration he holds. We can rework that expression as he holds and he holds a celebration. But deliberately, the poet emphasizes an idea there by writing the expression as and a celebration he holds. Then lastly, we have early to duty tomorrow holds not. Early to duty tomorrow holds not is an example of invasion. That line can be rewritten as early to duty tomorrow won't hold. That will not hold. But deliberately, the poet emphasizes the fact that the poet speaker won't have to face the regimented lifestyle of um, a public servant by waking early the next day um, in preparation for work. So all of these are examples of inversion in the poem. I will still encourage you to pick up the poem and read the entire poem and see if you can bring out more examples of inversion. Then we move to the poet's use of alliteration. Now, the image you are seeing there, we have Frank Fort Fred. You will see that a certain letter, that's letter F that gives us an F, is repeated there. And the meaning of alliteration is repetition of initial consonant sounds in line of a poem. In other words, the sound repeated must appear at the initial position of each of the words that constitute the line of a poem. The poet uses this to effectively convey his ideas. We have about seven examples right then on the screen. Faithful service to his fatherland. You see that the um, they repeated sounds there have been underlined. And in the first example, the fifth sound is repeated in faithful and fatherland. Then we have he home. That's today retires he home. The he sound is repeated in he and home. Then we have he holds. That's and the celebration he holds. He holds. The he sound is also repeated there. Then we have rules and regulations. The re sound is repeated in rules and regulations. Battled with his bottle booze. B sound is repeated there. Way home on wheel. Way sound is repeated in way and wheel. Then boomed is brand new car. The B sound is repeated in boomed and brand. I want you to take note of all of these. Then we have the poet's use of irony. Now, irony comes in three different ways. We have verbal irony, there is dramatic irony, and there is situation irony. For the purpose of this class, we will restrict ourselves to situation irony. And situation irony simply means the discrepancy between what is expected to happen and what eventually happens. You will see that the moment of unbridled joy on the part of this poet speaker causes the poet speaker to crash the brand new car given to him and then to crash his life in the process. So it is ironic that the persona's hope is short-lived on the same day celebrates his freedom that has eluded him for 35 years. It is also ironic that the poetic persona is responsible for his own death. This is termed situation irony. Someone who has jealously guarded his life while in service for a period of 35 years suddenly is responsible for uh, his own death. Moments of celebration suddenly halt his life. He has worked and labored under restricting conditions successfully for 35 years but cannot manage a day of his freedom and liberation. The image you are seeing there typically uh, depicts situation irony. That's a fire truck that catches fire itself. So it is understood something that is meant to quench fire goes into flame. That's an example of situation 
irony. The image is just to give you an ample description, a better description of what situation irony is. Then we have the poet's use of repetition. If you could look at the image by up the extreme our right, you will see repetition is the mother of learning and the father of action, which makes it the architect of accomplishment. Repetition simply means the recurrence of words or phrases in different lines of a poem. And poets use repetition just to achieve emphasis, to lay certain emphasis on certain ideas. In the poem, a government driver on his retirement, the poet repeats some expressions. For instance, the expression booze is repeated in lines 10, 15, 26, 28, and 30 of the poem. Fatherland is repeated in lines 2 and 20. We have duty rules repeated in lines 6 and 11. Faithful service is repeated in lines 2, 14, and 27. Now you see that all of these expressions are repeated just to emphasize certain ideas in the poem. Now these recurrent words help to emphasize the main idea expressed in the poem and add to the rhythmical quality of the poem. Now we have the poet's use of personification. Personification simply means giving human qualities to animals or objects. And an example in this poem, we have today frees and makes me a king. The day, that's a particular day today, is given the ability of installing one as a king. Today frees and makes me a king. It's an example of personification used by the poet in the poem, A Government Driver, on his retirement. Then we have the poet's use of euphemism, which is the last figure of speech we will consider in this lecture. Euphemism simply means expression of unpleasant events in a mild or pleasant way. If you look at the image there, that's an old rickety tattered car, and the inscription on it is for sale runs good. Nobody will, I will see this kind of car and say that it runs good. That's euphemistic, an expression of unpleasant events in a mild or pleasant way. The poet uses this in the poem. Now, despite that the poem ends on a tragic note, the poet downplays it by expressing the poetic persona's death in a mild tone. If you look at the quoted um, stanza of the poem, on his way home on wheels, booze booze his vision and clear judgment. He boomed his brand new car and it sent him home, home to rest in peace. It sent him home there simply means that the poet speaker dies while um, you know, driving under the influence of alcohol and home to rest in peace, thus he has gone on a journey of no return. Now it is understood as the poet persona drives his brand new car on the same day returns already drunk, he cannot see clearly and due to his poor vision, he crashes his new car and dies instantly. Those two lines, it, and it sent him home Home to rest in peace are purely euphemistic. The poet deliberately uses this expression to um, underplay the, um, you know, the tragedy that befalls the poet speaker. Then finally, to our evaluation, by now I should know to explain the poet's use of inversion and the examples of that in the poem, the poet's use of alliteration, the poet's use of euphemism, and the poet's use of irony. We want to get feedback from you. You can reach us on Facebook via the group Edu Media Africa. And uh, of course, you can reach us via Gmail, edumediaafrica gmail.com. And you can contact us on telephone 070 See you next time. Bye bye.